Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We're working on Measure for Measure and we get to hear from Friar Peter today in Act 5, Scene 1. So there's a lot going on and this is a very long scene, but basically we are at the gates of the city and the Duke has returned dressed as the Duke and he met Angelo and Aeschylus and he's very much playing that he is on their side of things. And Isabella came out to accuse Angelo and was herself accused of being crazy. So she's being arrested, but as she's being arrested, she's like, you know, if only Friar Lodovic was here, like he could he could vouch for me and Lucio's like yeah I knew him and he was a scurvy fellow and all this sort of thing and Friar Peter stands up and he's like no actually he was he was an honorable gentleman and there's some back and forth on it and and to sort of end that bit of argument Friar Peter says well he in time may come to clear himself but at this instant he is sick my lord of a strange fever Upon his mere request, being come to knowledge that there was complaint intended against Lord Angelo, came I hither to speak as from his mouth, what he doth know is true and false, and what he with his oath and all probation will make up full clear, whensoever he's convented, first for this woman to justify this, no this worthy nobleman, so vulgarly and personally accused, her shall you hear disproved to her eyes till she herself confess it. So Friar Peter is like, I'm here to talk on behalf of Friar Lodovic. I know everything that he knows because, and he knew that there was going to be this complaint lodged against Lord Angelo. So I'm here to say that Isabella is lying, which technically she is because she says that she slept with, with Angelo, but she didn't because Mariana slept with Angelo. So technically Friar Peter is correct, but Isabella doesn't want to give away yet that that there's been another party in this whole thing and she they they continue arresting her they carry her off um, or escort her off to jail and then mariana comes in with a veil over her face and they're like who are you and she's like i'm only gonna talk to my husband and there's a bunch of back and forth and wordplay and that sort of thing until finally andrew's like okay so who are you and she's like oh my husband wants to know who i am so she takes off the veil and and the Duke is like, do you know this woman? And Angela's like, but you, you, like we kind of sort of dated like five years ago or something. But like once our engagement was called off, like I haven't talked to her in the last five years. And she's like, actually, we just slept together like last night. And he's like, no, there's absolutely no way that that could have happened. And <laughs> Friar Peter gets in on this again. And he's like, oh, if only... If only the the other friar was here, maybe he could settle some of this stuff. And the provost knows where he is. And the duke is like, okay, yes, provost, why don't you go get that other friar, Lodovic? So the provost leaves, and then the duke is like, and in the meantime, I'm going to let you all settle this little thing. Aeschylus, you're in charge. I'm gonna, just going to pop over here for a quick moment so that he can disappear because he's going to show up again dressed as the friar like we thought that we just had a nice clean reveal about to happen but no it can't just be a nice clean reveal it has to be the most convoluted reveal where he's there and it seems like he's being mean and he's lying and that people who are saying the truth are being accused of lying and people who are actually know what's going on are telling falsehoods in order to set everybody up and all that sort of thing and then the duke disappears to dress up like a friar again like really yes Really, but that's where we're gonna leave you for today. We'll pick up again tomorrow once the Duke has left and Aeschylus is in charge. I'll see you then for that. Mm -hmm.